Good morning, everyone. We are already in our fourth day. Everyone is surviving. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Let's let's continue. Uh, today um, we have the pleasure. Good morning to, to have everyone. Professor Gerhard already it. in our fourth day. Uh, Professor Gerhard everyone is surviving. Uh, expert. <laughs> Hopefully. expert in electrochemical okay. process. Let's, let's continue. Fuel cell, uh, today, lead um, batteries in hydraulics. Pleasure to, to have and materials catalyst, Gerhard surface Ed. finishing, high temperature materials, uh, Professor Gerhard, he's thermochemical uh, energy, gasification, pyrolysis, torrefaction, clean gas process, hydrogen production. He is graduating chemical engineering. Bachelor in Chemistry, Aeronautical Mechanical, 1988, Doctorate in Nuclear Materials by São Paulo University in 1998. Presently, uh, he is operational, uh, Operation Director of Electrocell. It, uh, it was a company founded recently, in 2017. Vice President of German Brazilian Engineering Association and Professor at uh, uh, FE uh, Engineering Industrial Engineering uh, School University. In the past, he worked for, for the Institute of Technolo Technological Research here, next to the university, head of the Thermal Energy and uh, Engine Laboratory. Innovation Directory Advisor, President Advisor to 2011-2017, Founder of Electrocell, Head Engineer at the Cascadura uh, Surface Finishing Company. It was an invited professor at the University of Sao Paulo, FAP and Oswaldo Cruz. Hydrogen Technologies Coordinator at the Brazilian Association of Technical Standards, a cultural uh, director at Brazilian Surface Finish Association. It highlights he has also 11 patents, international awards, SAE, SNE, SNE, and FINEP. Okay, so let's give a warm welcome to Professor Gerhard Et. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure and an honor to me to be here to, uh, to present my work uh, here on the Polytechnic School of Sao Paulo University. Uh, I work at on nearby here on IPT. It's an Institute of Technology Research and also in Electrocell. Uh, Thank you, Professor Simões, for the invitation. I, I will present you uh, fuel cell and hydrogen production. What the uh, status, what the, what's very new, also the basic of fuel cell and, electro and hydrogen production. Uh, we start here this morning with the stack fuel cell, it's a PEM fuel cell, and we had a problem of the cooling system of the, of the fuel cell. It's lake fuel the system. So, so we will start with the working principle of fuel cell uh, after uh, coffee break different kind of fuel cell, PEM fuel cell, high temperature fuel cell, phosphoric acid fuel cell, uh, SOFC fuel cell, uh, what advantage or disadvantage of any kind of fuel cell. Tomorrow we will see hydrogen production and storage for fuel cells, hydrogen storage, and also 
some application. I will show a, a, a fuel cell running, uh, a small fuel cell, uh, and final use automotive and distributed generation energy. So we start with uh, working principle. But I will, I, uh, last night, I started to construct this slide here to show in Sao Paulo state where you can study a fuel cell and hydrogen production. First, you can see here on the Polytechnic School, we have a different laboratories that can operate with fuel cell in hydrogen. Very important project are running today. Also, we have here on the Sao Paulo University, the Institute of Chemistry, very famous also. Also, we have a here a Nuclear Energy Research Institute. They have a specific program for fuel cell and hydrogen. We have also the IPT, the IPT where I work at. They have a lot of laboratories that they start with studying fuel cell for 30 years ago. We have also Campinas University. We have UNESP. You have the ITA, Aeronautic Technology Institute. Also, we have companies. My company, <laughs> Electrocell. And we have another two companies. We are partners, ba BASE and Hytron. We also have electrical companies. They work with fuel cell. CESP, IES, AES, CPFL. Also, we have uh, natural gas uh, company, Congas. This is the universe, one part of the universe that we have on fuel cell. Also, these years, we have the biggest and more famous international congress of hydrogen fuel cell in Brazil. It was the first time in Brazil, the first time in Latin America. It's the World Hydrogen e Economy Conference. That here we had uh, 2,000 two uh, countries participate in this Congress. Here nearby on the energy electrotechnic uh, environment, we had uh, uh, another conference with from fuel cell and uh, lithium batteries. Here in Itaipu, we and PTE, we had, had another conference with hydrogen and battery. In here, the more recent, we have very top level expertise that's showing for us how the new technology that have on the world uh, is very famous uh, school. So, let's start. <laughs> I will show you working principle of the fuel cell, but we will start first with some basic of electrochemistry, some principle that we used to configure a fuel cell. The first is a little history about the fuel cell. We have two famous scientists. One is a science and lay lawyer. Lawyer and scientist, this is very different. <laughs> Is William Groove from England. He did, he start with the with the fuel cell. He construct two cells, one electrolyzer and one fuel cell. This is very common that we saw this in the, on the school, and we can then he being electrolyzer into hydrogen oxygen. Water is being electrolyzer by passing electric current through it. This year. And he know that it produce oxygen and hydrogen. Then here is uh, uh, the energy. Then he put here a meter, on the, and put off the, uh, the, the, uh, the tension. And he note that a small current flowing between anode and cathode. Very small currents flowing. 
then he knows that there is a today this is a fuel cell. It is electrolyzer. Another scientist was Sean Bein in Germany. He he also start ten years later uh, the principle of the electrochemistry for fuel cell. What we note here, sorry, what you note here, the electrolysis is being reversed. The hydrogen and oxygen are combining, and electrical current is being produced, but very small current flowing. What we need to do to put a better efficient for this? That way, what you know that this formula reaction. There is a combustion. There is a the burn being burned. We have a combustion. We saw also cold combustion. Why? We will see here. But the heat maybe can be liberated. Then we have energy as heat and power. But current produce very small. What are many reasons for the small current? The first is low contact area between, between the gases, the electrode, and the electrolyte. This is more important. We need area to have a good reaction. Area. Another is the large distance between the electrode, the distance here. Here we can note that we have a um, pipe here, a glass pipe, and here the electrodes are fast isolated, and if you have only the diffusion through here and not through here, then the area that we have is only this here and not also this here. Then we need to have a better efficient to increase the area, the contact area between another cathode. Also this, this, this distance, distance here we need to decrease. This is very simple, but it's very important. We, then we have different kind of fuel cell, different kind of type of fuel cell, and we will start on the acid electrolyte fuel cell. We will see the alkaline fuel cell and the acid fuel cell. On the acid fuel cell, we have two reactions on the anode and the cathode. At the anode, you have the oxidation of the hydrogen. And here we, we, we have four electrons. On the cathode, using acid electrolyte, you use the reduction of O2, react with proton from hydrogen, and we will produce water. Normally, a fuel cell produces half liter water per kilowatt hour. And then, what happened? The electrical circuit, uh, the electron produced at the anode must pass through the electrical circuit, external circuit. The proton hydrogen, sorry, the proton hydrogen must pass the electrolyte. An acid fluid with three uh, proton ions and so serve for this purpose very well. And then we need to have electrolyte that will pass the hydrogen protons. And also we need to control the quantity of proton will pass between anode and cathode. This reason we use we use a proton exchange membrane. Then he control the quantity of proton hydrogen from hydrogen, then cross the membrane. Comparing compar compar the equation, we have the oxida oxidizing oxidizing of the hydrogen and the reduction of the oxygen in producing water. What is very important is 
it should be noted that the electrolyte must only allow proton of hydrogen ions to pass through it and not electrons. If we have an electron, we have a short circuit. Then we need every stack here, we need to isolate electrical, isolate the anode and the cathode. Sometimes we have millimeter of this instance, but the same problem we have on the lithium batteries, the lithium ion battery. You have a millimeter distance between anode and cathode, and we can have any short circuit on anode and cathode. But we use bipolar plate. We saw that the bipolar plate, you have on one side anode, and the other side cathode. And it's very good plate. Electrochemistry, we will see here the cell potential. Here on the right, we will see uh, here the right, the reduction. On the left, the oxidation. Important that you have every time the reduction potential that we put here inside this formula. And here we start to calculate. It's very fast to know, only remember. Here we have a, a cell, anode and cathode. We know that here is oxidation, here's a reduction. Here's a, a Daniel cell, is zinc copper. On the right, we have here this potential. On the left, the reduction. But when put on the formula, here you see this is, is in reduction size, reduction, reduction, but this will be the oxidation reduction and here we put over time in reduction uh, uh, movement when we put here on the formula of uh, Gibbs and energy you will see that this number here is negative then this reaction on this position here is spontaneously this is good for fuel cell and good for a battery normally we use activity uh, for uh, concent ionic concentration. Another case is opposite. Here we have this is like a reference electrode. Then we have uh, oxidation of uh, mercury. And here the reduction of chloride. And here we can see that the delta G is positive and it's non spontaneously, spontan spontaneously. So we have this principle of the fuel cell, but we continue. Here we see the fundament of cinetic and mechanism of electron reactions. Here we consider the case of ox an oxidation of reduction of the electrode without chemical transformation. This is very important. We will start and fix some parameters. And here it is the very important movement that happen inside electrochemical process that we have here. The diffusion re re region is more, uh, dist more distant between I know the cathode distant from anode or from a cathode. Then we have here a rearrangement the, of the ionic atmosphere. Then we have a reorientation of the solvent dipole, dipoles. Then we have the alteration of the distance between the center of ion and the ligand of the ligands. Very fast reaction. The electron transfer, or oxidation or reduction, also very fast reaction, the reaction and the inverse sense to go to this size here. Normally this velocity is very slow. This is the reason that we have in our system a slow reaction. What we need to increase the velocity of the diffusion. How we can change the parameters that we see now. Here we will start with the, uh, 
the mass transport, and we can see the rate about the the rate about the elect, uh, kinet, electrokinetic and the uh, the par oxygen or uh, O R. What important here is that these in terms are affected not only by the electro reaction itself, but also by the transport of the species to and from the buke solution. And another very important point is that you control all the chem electrochemical reaction is the transport. This transport can occur by diffusion, convection, and or by migration. Normally have you, you have the three at the same time. What is diffusion, what is convection, what is migration? Here we have the movement of the ions on the solution. Um, diffusion is due to the concentration gradient. The difference of the concentration, you have the diffusion of the element to where you have more concentrate to low concentrate. Migration, where you electric field effect, you have a, like a um, magnet, if you have more uh, electric effect, you have more migration. Normally this happens nearby the electrode, not on the, uh, the area where you have diffusion, but very near the electrode, the surface of the electrode. This here could be three, four centimeters or much more, but this here is about two centimeters. The convection is the agitation of the solution. The convection could be the difference of the temperatures in a surface finishing uh, plating, the temperature of our chromium electrode deposition is the different of the temperatures. Then you have a convection of the, the solution. Then this convection of the solution will increase the diffusion. Okay. The diffusion occurs for all species. Migration affects only charged species. This is the important point. So, this was the base of the electrochemistry, but we didn't stop now with the basic. We will continue when we start with the fuel cell. But we start now with the fuel cell. This is a fuel cell. This is a little fuel cell. Here we have the anode. Here's, here we have the cathode. Here we have the electrolyte. What is the, what is the electrolyte? This is the electrolyte. It's a solid electrolyte. This is a solid electrolyte from a PEM fuel cell. It's very thin. This is the reason that we can have a very big dense energy density with a PEM fuel cell. From here you have the oxidation of, of the hydrogen, and here you have the reduction of the oxygen. And here you have different kinds of electrolyte. Different kind of I will pass depois. I will mostrar depois isso when it's not membrane. So another important principle about electrolyzer and battery. Maybe you know, but on the fuel cell, on the cell, the anode is negative, the cathode is positive. Put an electrolyzer, opposite. The oxidation is positive, the reduction is negative. Why? The reason that here you have a found, uh, a current uh, found, then the electron comes from here. And here, the electron is from the anode, come from here, then here is negative. Then here is negative, when here is negative, here is positive. This is the reason that we change the polarity on the fuel cell, on the electrolyzer. This is, we note, it's very easy to note in the deposition process, when we have a 
uh, when you put a piece inside the bath, you will start a corrosion. Then we will see this kind of process. And we start the deposition, the polarity inverse. Will inf inverse. Then it, this definition is very important for tomorrow and for, for today, where we see that sometimes the anode is negative, sometimes the anode is positive. And we start with the S electrolyte. Here we can see that in acid electrolyte, you have proton from hydrogen proton, the hydrogen ions through the electrolyte. Then here you have the anode. Here we come in the hydrogen gas. We have the oxidation of the hydrogen. And we have four electrons. Through the membrane go the hydrogen protons. And we he react with the oxygen plus the four electrons, then go outside and produce water. Then, on negative electrons flow from anode to cathode. And the conventional current flow from cathode to anode. Normally inverse, the current and the electrons. There, there is very important also, you know. On the alkaline electrolyte fuel cell. Now we didn't have more acid here, we have alkaline. But note that we will change. Here, we, on the anode, hydrogen come in as a fuel. He react of the alkaline that come through the electrolyte and produce water and energy. They go outside the circuit, go to cathode. On the cathode, you have oxygen. Reduce the oxygen, lose the water, and produce the hydroxide. And what we note here? that on the alkaline fuel cell, the water will produce at the anode. And here, on the acid electrolyte fuel cell, the water will produce on the cathode. The change. What's important here? In alkaline, it, the hydroxyl ions are available and mobile. On the acid electrolyte, the, the proton hydrogen are available in mobile. And here we can compare both uh, kind of fuel cell, alkaline fuel cell and uh, acid fuel cell. Note that we have two hydrogen here, one oxygen. We have two hydrogen here in one oxygen, one molecular oxygen. Then it's the same reaction. The same, the same proportional between hydrogen and oxygen. What is limit, what limits the current? This also, this, this is energy. The, the air at the anode, the hydrogen reacts releasing energy, it's normal. However, just become energy is released it not, does not mean that the reaction proceeds at any limited rate. Then we need, uh, uh, we have, we need energy activation to start the energy. How we can reduce this energy? Using catalyst. The reason, this is the reason that we use catalyst. The black here is platinum and carbon black in both sides. In then, in every cell, you have a catalyst. But when you operate in very high temperature, you don't need special catalyst, or you can use less catalyst. If you run in low temperature, you need more catalyst. Then, there are three ways to deal with the slow reaction rate about because this classical energy form. They use a catalyst, raising the temperatures, increasing the electrode area. 
when you use catalyst, you increase a good catalyst, increase the area, surface area. So, we have also one important point of study, a lot of research institutes are studying the three-phase contact. The three-phase contact is the reaction that involving the fuel or oxygen with the electrolyte and the electrode where go put the electron out. Normally, we mean it is at three-phase contact. What's imp very important, the rate at which the reaction happens will be proportional of the area of the electrode. How much the area, more current you have. Here, you have different... You have two cells. Two cells, different area, different current, but the same potential. This is the point. Different area, different current, but the same potential. The voltage of the fuel cell is quite small, about 0.7 when we're drawing and use useful current. I, wish we, I will show you the polarization curve that the polarization curve, uh, you see that for each uh, current density, you have a specific tension for itself. This polarization curve is very important too when we project a new fuel cell. When you put here uh, three cells in series is the same as in battery. We increase the tension. Then here we have a big cell, one cell, two, the second cell, the third cell. You put all in series, you, you increase the tension. Sorry, I need more 0.7. <laughs> because I, I start with two, but I didn't change here the <laughs> calculation. Sorry. <laughs> okay. It's only to see if you are pay attention. <laughs> so, then here you have the cathode, here you have the anode. The cathode, anode, cathode, anode. But look, here we have the cathode isolated from the anode. It's true? Here we have the membrane inside. Here we can have any electrical contact. But anode, the current comes from here, the electron from here to here, here to here. In a lead battery from our car, we weld the anode to cathode, anode to cathode for each cell to put in series. We weld, weld. But here, we can have only one piece. This is a big plate for a big cell. One side, anode. Another side, cathode. Then the electron can go to the other side through the plate. In not in an external circuit as in a lead battery. This here we mean bipolar plate. Bipolar plus one side is anode, another side is cathode. And also, we need few catalysts. This is very important. Here, the black here is a carbon black. What we can see here is the platinum, a nano platinum, nano black, nano carbon, and nano platinum. And here we have the structure of the catalyst of fuel cell. Here we can see when you have more area, 
we have more area to react and reduce oxide the hydrogen on the oxygen. Then here we can note that the area is very important to increase the current, but the tension is the same. Here we have a single cell, and then we have some uh, uh, air to, uh, uh, so here is an open cathode, you can see here, uh, and here we feed the hydrogen. Here we mean the bipolar plate at the show, from one side, anode, to other side, cathode. Here we can see also anode and cathode. And also we have all the assemble and gasket. And then he, he, we have here the electrolyte. Then we have here the diffusion. It's a, it's a, 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 it's a, a, I will show you this is the gas diffusion paper. We thought about this. And here we have the gasket. What we have a problem here? To construct a fuel cell, we have different uh, contact area. We have one point here, the electrolyte and the diffusion. We ha have a contact. Then we have the cooling system, another contact. We can cool with water or with air. And then we have a di different kind of contact, material contact, that we can have some problem of resistance. And this is the reason that we have, when we, is, that is very complex to construct a fuel cell. But I think on the end of this week, everyone here can construct very easy a fuel cell. I hope. Then we have here three cell with external manifold. With here the hydrogen come here inside and come here out. Here we can see a manifold. Here you have a five kilowatt PAM fuel cell. Oops. It's heavy. <laughs> here we can see a PEM fuel cell, and here we can see the manifold where we, we can we put in the air, hydrogen, and water. Here's the, the what we mean here, what you told you here. Not here. Ah oh, no. It's okay. I will show. This is the end plate. To have the, to, to here some to put every pressure in every member that will be the same. This is a pump filter. And inside, we have an internal manifold. It's another important point. This year, we have some problems to configure a fuel cell. First, the hydrogen and oxygen can uh, mix in internally in each side. It's not possible. Then what we construct here? Here you ca have all the canals, and here also. This here are the manifold of this fuel cell plate. But this side here is not exactly a, a bipolar plate, but it's a water side cooling system. Then. If we put this both together, 
Now is a bipolar plate. This side oxygen or air, it's this side hydrogen. Then we can see here that the oxygen go here inside, need to go this side here, go here inside to go to this uh, to side here, to the oxygen side. Then we put 200 cells in, in series, go here inside, air go here inside, and the water cooling go here inside. This hole here was a, a different project that we construct to pour the excess of water that we have in this canal here. But, so, we have one plate, another plate, we need to have a gasket here, we need to have a gasket to this side, a gasket to this side, we have to have a membrane here on the middle, like this. We need to have this here, gas diffuse layer. We need to have the membrane, another gasket, and this with 200 cells together in series. And we need to ensure that the pressure is the same, the mechanical pressure is the same in each cell. And we need to have humidification in both sides, anode and cathode. And we need to sure that we didn't have any leak, that the liquid come, it's, don't, it's not possible that the liquid go here outside or oxygen or hydrogen. Then it's not simple, but now it's very possible if a different kind of of hundreds of companies that produce PEMP fuel cell. It's not easy. Right. Ah, see, it's carbon. Uh, hello, my name is Laura from uh, south of Brazil. And um, it's kind of hard to understand how everything gets into the fuel cell, um, and also how is the water that uh, it's created, um, how do you take it off, or what do you do with it? Good. Good question. <laughs> here, this plate here, we have a problem that you mentioned. And this kind of plate here, what happened? If you come from the high, the normally on the acid fuel cell like a PEM, the water will produce on the cathode. If you put the the inside, thank you, the inside hydrogen in this side here, okay, he will increase, go here up, and he go out. But on this side, the ox the uh, oxygen or air, if we put this side here, he go up, he go out here. What will happen here? We here, in this side here, we will produce water. Half liter water per kilowatt hour cell. Then we will accumulate water in this side. And every pipe here, canal, we stopped the oxygen. In this side here, the best thing is to put oxygen in this side here, that with the gravity, the water go out. But you have some problem of the water measurement of the cell that we will show you. Then, but we are here now. Water problem management. The water are produced on the cathode, but you have a counter diffusion to the anode. So it's possible that you can have water on the cathode also. Then we need to what? control the temperature of the fuel cell. That to control the quantity of water inside the cell. This is very important to control the water. Then you need to control 
the quantity of water that we have here, sometimes if you increase the, the current density of the cell, if you increase, increase, you need more water. If you uh, use a lower power density, lower than 0.3, you don't need a extra humidification. But if you use, you need more than 0.3 ampere per centimeter, you need to extra modification. You can have an extra modification on the anode and also at the cathode. Because we saw here that the membrane of this nafion that we use, we need water. If you don't need use water, we don't have the diffusion through the membrane. Here we saw a, a PEM, a 60 cell PEM. It's black or white, but it's not so antiquated. <laughs> so, they efficient on open circuit voltage of the cell. Normally, you use here, I, I don't start to read, read but normally, uh, the energy of the chemistry of the chemical input output is not easy definite, definite. At a simple level, we could say that the chemical energy of the hydrogen, oxygen, and water. The problem is chemical energy is not simply defined. And some term, some terms such as enthalpy, Helmholtz function, Gibbs free energy are used. Normally in today's we use more XRG as kind of useful energy. And also, the term of calorific value is very useful. Free energy, free, Gibbs free energy, it can be defined of the energy available to do external work. In negligencing, any work done by changing in pressure and volume. In a fuel cell, the external work involves moving electron around the electric circuit. Then the electron go out from elect external electric circuit. Any work done by change the volume between the input and output is not harnessed by the fuel cell. And then the energy, simply, simply to, to put, is the energy free energy plus the energy connecting with the entropy. Then here the Gibbs energy of the product and the reactants. And here we can start is to see that the Gibbs free energy of the formation is not constant. Then, then the fr Gibbs free energy is not const constant and change with the temperatures and state of liquid and gas. This is the reason that we saw that the next slide, that we have different kind of free energy, Gibbs free energy for form water product that you mentioned. Here we saw that the form of the water product of the fuel cell, if you have liquid, different kind of temperature, the delta G will change. And then this is the reason that we have for each temperature and if concentration we have, we will change the Gibbs energy. If we have a liquid phase, as we have a gas phase. This we should see that the high heating value and low heating value. And then we start to with uh, using Faraday constant. We like to use this formula here: the number of elect electron, Faraday constant, different potential between anode and cathode. And here we, we have this formula here: potential keeps energy, free energy. Note is negative, and two electron and Faraday. To a that we use hydrogen. 
this equation gives an electromagnetic force or a resistive, resistive, uh, reversible open circuit of the hydrogen and fuel cell. This is very important, that the process is reversible. And then, for example, of a hydrogen, fuel cell hydrogen, operate with 200 degrees, we have this delta G, then we have 1.14 volt. This is not a, fuel, a PEM fuel cell. This could be an alkaline fuel cell. And then we saw that the Gibbs free energy uh, will change with the temperature and the pressure of the gases. And we can define as the electrical energy produced and the Gibbs free energy change. Then we, from here we can solve the efficient of the process. I will show again here. Here we can solve when we are burning the hydrogen and producing steam, we have this energy here. And if we have condensed of water, it's different. This difference between two value is 44 kilojoule uh, kilo mole is the molar enthalpy of the vaporization of the water. This number we use in all the um, configuration of the fuel cell. It depends on the temperature that you, you operate the cell. And then if we can see here the maximum efficient possible, then we have the Gibbs free energy in the LP, entropy of formation is the maximum efficient of the fuel cell. Here we are using the high heating value a low heating fellow. Then the maximum efficient of the fuel cell, we can see here, and using the form delta G equal a minus N F delta E, you will have the values of the maximum electromotive force cell. And then the efficient. Then we have here liquid, form of water at this temperature, this delta G, we have 1.23 volt, an efficient of 83 degrees uh, percent. What the rest is heat. Every cell produces heat. If you operate with low efficient, you have operate with more heat. Low or the efficient Efficient, for example, in, in, in Japan, you produce, you have fuel cell with less efficient. Why? They need heat to heat the houses. Then it, there we ha you have a small stack in a big case to accumulate hot water. Sometimes you, you, you don't need heat, you need energy. Then you increase the efficient of the cell to produce less heat. But if you increase the heat, uh, the efficient of the fuel cell, you need to increase the capex. The price of the fuel cell will increase. If you have the fuel, very high value of the fuel, you need more efficient. If you, your fuel is very, the price is very low, you don't need efficient. You can de in decrease the size of the stack. You will produce more heat, but we don't spend money on fuel. Then we need to have a balance about the price of the fuel and the price of the, uh, of the stack, the fuel cell. The OPEX, operation cost, and CAPEX, you need to have a balance. And this you can uh, do on the configuration of the system. 
And also an important point. Here we need, you see that here the current limit and here is just fuel cell. Then we saw that in low temperature we have a very high efficient of a fuel cell. But this we have electrochemical process, this efficient will diminish. And here you have more heat. And this heat on high temperature press a temperature cell, this is temperature this line here for high temperature cell, this is for low temperature cell. But this heat here you can recover and use as power. Then we will increase the efficient that we saw here. On high temperature, we decrease the efficient, but this different effi the efficient, the heat that we produce here, you can use on different kind of system and also to produce energy. Recovering, we, ha we produce half liter water per kilowatt hour. And here we start to calculate the cell efficient. We will start here with the same formula here, but we will use the number of high heating value, 1.48, and low heating value, 1.25. Then we calculate the cell, 1.48. Normally, when we, you saw some fuel cell data from some suppliers, we need every time to saw if they calculate with high heating value or low heating value. If you saw here, we high heating value, ah, here we can see, sorry. Here, if you calculate with low heating, uh, uh, low heating value, the, the, the efficient will increase to sell to a market is good to sell a high heating efficient but every time you need to see what kind of number they use here And here, the fuel, not uh, all the fuel that is fed to a fuel cell can use. Some parts are not reacted on the reaction. Then we need to have a number, a, a, a fuel utilization coefficient. And this normally use 0.95. Then we need to remember that not all fuel are used. And sometimes you use, you, you put 10% more fuel on the, on the anode side. We mean this lambda. Then you put 10% uh, of hydrogen on the anode side. Why? We need, we need sure our site here, our canal here, they have the same concentration on hydrogen. When you start, you have 100%. But when we start, finish here, you need to have also 100%. And with 200 plate, you need to have the same concentration on the last plate. What happens if you use air? We have 21% of oxygen, but when do you we use the oxygen, you, we have on the last stack only nitrogen. You can ha this can happen. Then we use a lambda four or two point five to four of the stoichiometric uh, data to be to be sure that we have the same concentration of hydrogen and oxygen on the beginning on the last plate. But if you use a lambda 2.5, you will need a 
bed, a bigger kennel on one side and a smaller on the other side. If you increase the velocity, what could happen? That the, the gas with will dry the membrane, increase the velocity. If it dry the membrane, what we need? To do extra modification. But this extra modification can't uh, condense, the water can't condense inside the fuel cell. And then we start the big problem when you repair one problem, you have problem with another two or three problems. To balance, this is then is very, is very difficult. It's po difficult. You have difficulty to control all the data. Our, again, the Gibbs free energy in a chemical reaction vary with the temperature and uh, equally important through the more complex are the Gibbs energy, free energy, with reactants of pressure and concentration. We are using gas. If we are using gas, we have didn't have liquid. Then we use uh, pressure. Then on the calculate of Nernst equation, we need to use pressure. Then we change a little the Nernst equation. And here, oh, we saw here, okay. Here, yeah. Here, the typical polarization curve of a cell. Here, we have tension, and here we have current density. This is a typical curve. With this curve here, you can analyze the, how the measurement of the current tension of this membrane here. And then we can see here the no losses, voltage is the maximum, 1.2, when the thermodynamical reversible cell. Then here, on the beginning, the tension go down very fast. It's just here the activation over potential, rapid initial fall in voltage. And then this area here is the area that we used to construct a fuel cell. If you use, uh, we, if you have, we we'll have a very efficient fuel cell, we need like this region here, because we have a bigger tension. If you have a lower efficient, you use this region here because you have lower tension, but here we will produce more heat. If we produce more heat, we need to take care about the cooling system. If you use this region here, the cooling system is not so important, but this region here is very important. And then here, the, all the component smaller and here all the component is bigger until here your fuel cell stack tech the capex for the fuel stack is bigger but all the component is lower is smaller here the size of stack is bigger uh, is uh, uh, is bigger yeah it's also here here is the stack is smaller yeah, here the stack is smaller, but we have bigger efficient. Here the stack is bigger because you have uh, bigger company. <laughs> and here this voltage begins to fast fall because here you have start the mass transport pro problem. It's diffusion problem. Here we, where we have the diffusion problem of the stack, the diffusion on the membrane. This is a, a PEM fuel cell. This is a PEM fuel cell. And here, here you have a high heating a solid oxide fuel cell to operate a high temperature. What you note here? The nose loss voltage 
yeah, zero down. But this curve here is more up. Not here. This curve here and here more down. This is a very the point that is very important to you for the edge of C cell. But here we have also we did they didn't lost energy on the activation here because you have high temperature. On PAM fuel cell you operate a low temperature. Then you have you lost energy on activation. Here, here you operate a high temperature, eight hundred degrees, you don't lose energy on the activation process. Then the fuel spell irreversibility cause of voltage drop. What is? Activation loss, what you saw, crossover and in internal circuit. Crossover happen when the gas, hydrogen, go direct to the anode and react on the oxygen without producing energy. When this happens, hydrogen direct on the cathode. What happened? When you start a, a pump fuel cell, on the beginning, you didn't have water on the mem membrane. Then it can happen that the hydrogen cross the membrane and go directly to the cathode. If you don't control, the membrane will burn. Then you need to control the humidity on the beginning of the cell. Also, you have a ohmic drop. Sorry, ohmic losses, and also the mass and concentration loss, diffusion problem. What we need to do, reducing the activation over voltage that we have on the beginning of the cell, raising the temperature cell. On the cell, we can operate 60. 60 degrees, 80 degrees, or beginning, we release the cell. Or, or we note at the SFC that the high temperature, the activation is, you don't need, uh, you don't lose energy on the activation. Using more effective catalyst, increase the roughness of the electrode, increase the area, increase reactant concentration, for example, using poor oxygen instead of air increase the concentration on the cathode side. Increase the pressure. This is very normal today. You have stack with more pressure. Ten years ago, you operate with 0.3 bar. Today, you operate in 4 bar. And here is, we can note the few crossover internal circuits. I think, I think it's very interesting here that here, because of the catalyst, it will react direct with oxygen, producing no current on the cell. If you react direct hydrogen with oxygen. We will saw tomorrow, we will run a, a small fuel cell here in our open circuit. Then every time, if you have current, you measure tension, every, uh, any, everything is happening inside the fuel cell. Then, when, when you have an open circuit, you can read a voltage. Without, also, without current, zero current, you measure 1.2 volt. This is a very important, very interesting on the fuel cell that we can measure tension only with a flash of hydrogen inside. When you put a little hydrogen, you saw the different tension in the anode and cathode. For the simulation, we can just, just for model of fuel cell, this is a, a design. We can have see the resistor, the capacitor, and different kind of system for simulation. And here I will show you some useful fuel cell equation that we normally use to project our fuel cell. Here's the oxygen air usage. Here we can see 
oxygen air, we use the, the, the potential of the, just some of the fuel cell stack, here are the data, and here the voltage of each cell. Here to show how much oxygen we need to use in our cell. Then we need to store the power that we have, you need, for example, this here. And here, the voltage. The voltage is way the efficient that we are working. And then this is the reason that we use the voltage and the power of the stack. For the air, you, you could operate with uh, air that goes out, you go in and out. They're different. You, you use uh, extra air. So exit air flow rate, so air in, and what oxidant you used. Then we can use this formula here to use. Is this a very useful formula? Very practical. Also, hydrogen used. It's very simple also. You can use here the power of the stack, the voltage of each cell. Also, when you use hydrogen with CO2 from a gasification process, we can also use direct CO2 with hydrogen inside the cell. But the hydrogen is dilute. We need to use the same, adapt this equation for this kind of reason. On water production, here we can saw that how many water we will produce with uh, the stack voltage of fuel cell. The heat, also the same, depend of the voltage of cell that you have. So here I saw, I used this book here to prepare the class. I think I like I'm a, very much this book here. So it's very good. From Brett, electrical chemistry principle I use I like to use this book here. And both here for, for hydrogen production from Dr. Stolten. These are very, he was last week here in Sao Paulo. Here from the OE and here for hydrogen storage. So I, I know what the time now. Good morning, Gerhard. Good morning, Sonny. Congratulations on your lecture. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, we used to work with hydrogen in our work together some years ago. Uh, do you have any information about the Brazilian uh, political for, for hydrogen? If there are any incentives today? And the other question is, what's the uh, how can I say, uh, gargalo? Uh, yeah, understand. Bo <laughs> bottleneck, right? The bottleneck of this uh, this uh, line of research. Okay. Good. Uh, the political uh, the incentive. Yes, we we have some local incentive for producing hydrogen, produce fuel cell like the program with Shell, like from the FAPESP, is a very good incentive to produce, to develop the technology, which is very important. We have the national political, but we, d we didn't implement this political. Uh, last week, last month, we had a, a World International Economy Conference in, in Rio de Janeiro. It's the biggest of the world and was we had uh, about 1,000 people uh, participating on the seminars. What's the 
I don't know, gargalos, the problem that we can have to develop the fuel cell, I think the first is the market. The big problem is the market. We need to produce with low price and high quality. It, we didn't have any, any scale to produce. And we need to comp compete on, with all the world. This is a big problem. We have technology, yes. Brazil have technology. Brazil have one of the best laboratory of the world. We have very famous laboratory, very famous team that are working with hydrogen for 30 years, 40 years. And, uh, and this, we have the technology, but to, to develop something and to put this on the market, this is a big problem. But not, our, or not only our problem. On the world, the, all of the world have the same problem. But some countries invest more in hydrogen fuel cell, and they have more incentive for the companies to produce. For me, the gr big problem is you form, you you have new technician, you have new scientists to develop technology, but you then don't have any place to use this technology that they, they science are developing. Or they go ahead to go to another com com countries that they have more opportunity, opportunity to develop. Or they start with a, another company to produce. What we are happening? I can show you what we are about the problem that we have. Sunny Jonathan was, we had the biggest project that we had. The first, when we start with producing small fuel cell, like this year, like this year, then Electro Paulo told us, I like 50 kilowatt. Oh, from this side for 50 kilowatt. We can do alone. We need help. We need knowledge. We need experience. Then we had a team. Uh, alone, we do nothing. We do nothing. We had a team with different kinds of expertise. And we plan how we can construct a fuel cell. Okay, when start, we need anod, we need, we know the fuel cell, we work with fuel cell. We don't stop, we start from zero. But we start. Then we need cathode, anode, membrane, electrode, electronic power, humidification, power control, uh, data management system, the BMS battery, and we, we start. I will show here what we done. We start here, 98, develop a fuel cell. Then we start with different kind of fuel cell. This year was the Sanatan Jonathan fuel cell stack. Was the first fuel cell stack from South Hemisphere. One was, we was considered one of the best four companies of the world to produce with 40 kilowatt, 50 kilowatt. This was our goal. And was it good? Run, and run very good. But what hard work here. We use a team for more than 100 people working directly or indirectly of this. We have thousands of suppliers to produce all the components here inside. And also, the balance of plants is very important. This was the big problem that we had, I will show told you tomorrow. Because we need a stack to produce stacks here. We need also humidification. To humidification, you need to use energy. To electro on the electronic power, 
you use energy, you lost energy. Then the balance of plants, you on the end you need 50 kilowatt out, but you use more energy inside. So how much energy you need from the stack to use on all the peripheral component of the stack. Then you need to calculate, simulate to have this answer. And this was the stack we worked. But I think the big problem now is market. But for our company on the world, but for I feel that we I I am Life, this every day, and market is the big problem. Not marketing, market is also more market. <laughs> yeah. This is marketing. <laughs> yeah. bon. Good Tudo morning, bom? Marcelo from Ipen. Uh, I have a, 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 a my colleague um, asked a, a very very good question for you. <laughs> Uh, 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 I go a, a question regarding the. Uh, I, I would like to know roughly. Uh, you you uh, um, like you present. If you put uh, 200 cells in series, about uh, in that uh, square area, for instance, how many energy we can produce or? Okay, uh, I will show you next class. Ah. But uh, the energy with 100 depends on the size of the stack. Here, if you, we go back to the polarization curve, here. Here you, you have the polarization curve. Then what's the size that we have? What, how many plates you need? For example, here you saw that here from one ampere cent per centimeter, you have 0.5 volt here, 0.5 volt. Then here, the pen of the area, here if you have 10 square meter, 10 square meter here, you can saw how many current you have, will have in one piece. The current will be the same in all this plate. The current is the same. But the tension, we will uh, increase the tension how many cells you have. Then. You have 100 cells, which is too strong. <laughs> if you have 100 cells with 0.5 volt, it's 100 cells plus 0.5. And then 100 cells plus 0.5 plus 100 millim or 1 ampere per centimeter square meter. This is you calculate how many cells. But if you use here, you have. 0.5 here. The efficient will be about 40%. 40%, you will have a lot of heat. Then you need to cool. In turn, you need to cool. And the different temperature inside, outside the cell is about 9 degrees. Then the efficient of the cooling system will increase the size of the cooling system. This is another problem that we will increase the capex of the Coulomb system. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Diana. Um, I'm from OSP too. Uh, I just thinking about you have too many uh, variables that you have to uh, like uh, optimize it, like. Uh, uh, fluid velocity, pressure, temperature, and I just would like to know if you have uh, some research about how ca uh, about uh, like how can uh, make like an uh, optimization of these variables for get a more efficient uh, product. Okay, 
yeah, maybe it's the need. Yeah, <laughs> it's it is a parameter. It's very important for your fuel cell. On the past, you use the concentration of the catalyst are, are higher. For example, you used 0.6 uh, milligram per centimi cubic centimeters for, for example, for the uh, cathode side and 0.4 on the anode side. You use a, a, a head of atmospheric pressure is 0.3 bar. Today, this, there are some studies that are using 0 0.08 milligram per centimeter square centimeters, but you use 4 bar. Then you put less catalyst, then it's lower the capex, and you have the same result. But work with pressure is what happened. The you increase the diffusion inside the cell. The hydrogen, proton hydrogen, will diffuse faster as in lower pressure. But we will have problem with the water management. This is the first problem that you will need to work when you work with high pressure, the water management. And the stoichiometric uh, uh, rate. The temperature, if you increase the temperature, we will, we will start see how much what, what's the humidity, humidity that you have on the, your fuel or air? And if you increase the temperature, normally the member starts to dry. Then you need to put extra humidification. And also, when you work with lambda 4 on the cathode side, four times the stoichiometric, you will dry the membrane. Now, so you need extra humidification. Then the, I will show you next class why the water balance management, the water balance management is so important. We, when you work with pressure, it's the best thing for the fuel cell, but the water management, the more complicated case. This is all when you have a fuel cell that is running very good. But so you have some interface contact, you can damage the cell. And you saw, we have a lot of uh, interface contact between the cathode from the GDL, from the bipolar plate, from the end plate, from the gasket, and uh, uh, all the system, you have problem, interface problem. Good morning, Professor. Thank you for the lecture. Okay. okay. Uh, um, I have a two little <laughs> questions. Uh, one first is, I don't know if you'll say, ab uh, you'll say about in the next in the lecture, but about the application, if you, if you uh, have used it or plain user or never, about the electrofluculation, because one Electro? thing, the electrofluculation, si. like use like, you can use like this current, make current to like to a uh, waste treatment. Treatment. I don't know if you use. And the second is about the material that you construct the the fuel cells. Okay, I think I will show in the next class. I will show you the materials. I bring some materials for you here. This is a composite with phenolic resin and different kind of pow powder of plate. Here is a different kind of composite. This is a with a graphite with PP. This is a injecting molded. This is pressure. I will show you all thing next slide, but I'm talking for you now. <laughs> and this is three materials. It's very all oh, is very different. This here have the best conductivity and this here does have the better pre a price. This is 
one dollar, this is ten dollar. This is different. But the conductivity here is very low and here is very high. But it's good or bad? No problem. If you have one dollar here, the conductivity is low, here is more stack, more plate. It's okay. Then lower conductivity is not good is not good or not bad. It's the properties. Then you you need to use this property that the, pro the, the properties that you have, then you increase, increase the quantity of plate. But increase the quantity of plate, you use more hydrogen. And with lower, efficient. And then we need to uh, start to resolve this problem that you have. Yeah, I don't work with lateral flocculation, but uh, okay. okay. Hi, I'm Gabriel from Argentina. I wanted to ask you because you said when you have higher temperature, you have lower efficiency. Sorry? But also, wait, could you repeat? <laughs> you said that when you have like higher temperature, you have lower efficiency and you need a bigger cooling system. My question is when you want to increase temperature to uh, reduce the activation losses? Okay, yeah, uh, high temperature is good to reduce activation, but you have some uh, temperature you can, to, for example, the pump fuel cell, you, c you can increase the temperature, but normally the temperature you use is 65 degrees. But if you increase more than 80 degrees, you will have problem of diffusion of the cell. Then you have some limit what the temperature can operate for, for example, fuel cell, PEM fuel cell. As you have seen, we have this, the, first the same problem, but the, in the, the, the activation is very low because you have, you work with 1,000 degrees, 800 degrees. Then you have some limit that you ever stack have. Then we, you need to uh, you take care of the limit of the stack. And if you increase the temperature of the stack, for example, I, I will, uh, I like to have a lower activation. But if you increase the temperature, you, will need, you need to be sure that all the peripheral can run on the high temperature, 80 degrees. You need more humidification. You need to see if this, your ceiling is okay. You need to take care of all the other all all the company. And also, the different temperature inside, outside of the stack, also we need to take care. Also, the plate, the size of the plate here. The temperature inside here needs to be the same. You can have a, here will be more heat, more, more temperature, and here lower temperature. We need to have the same temperature inside. Then the efficient of the cooling system need to be equal. This is the reason that you use cooling system in this side here. But if you come from here, the water that had come from another cell, the water will increase on the beginning, the other or the on the end of the plate, here a big stack. Then here, st the water come here inside and go here, then go to another stack, heat, the water will be increasing. It's this reason that you use this manifold here, that they go here inside, the outer water go down, each equal in each stack, down, and here is the outside manifold. Then we can, this, with this uh, design, you can be sure that the temperature in this every plate is the same, but here you have fresh water, and here not. And then here we see that on the beginning, you have one temperature, and here not. But if you see here, we have this here. This 
canal, this side here, in both sides. Then we, we can to be sure that on the beginning, on the end, I have first the same temperature. We divide into plate. This is the design of the fuel cell that you are trying, 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 simulation. We have a, we done two years simulation to produce this plate here. Okay. Sorry. 